So how do you solve problems involving percents? Well, this first question asks, what is 84% of 300? Uh, that's actually pretty straightforward. All you have to do is take the percentage and convert it to a decimal. And so if I have 84%, the number 84, all I have to do is move the decimal two times to the left. So one time is 8.4, two times will be 0.84. So what that means is this problem is just 0.84 times 300. So I'll just do my scratch work, 300 times 0.84. What that essentially means is you ignore the decimal and just multiply 4 times 0, which is 0, 0, 12, add a 0 as a placeholder, 8 times 0 is 0, 8 times 0 is 0, 8 times 3 is 24. Add those together, 0, 0, 2, Five, two. And so now, to put the decimal in the proper place, 300 has zero digits behind the decimal. 84 has two digits behind the decimal. So altogether, my final answer should have two digits behind the decimal. So that would mean it'd have to go right here. So the final answer is 252. So this one asks, 162 is what percent of 200? So this one is, a, is, a, is different in format. And so the procedure is not difficult, but it is different. So what we have to do is solve this one as a part over a whole. Because what they're telling you is 162 is, it says 162 is what percent? So it's a certain percentage of 200. So if it's a certain percentage, then it's a part of the 200, which is going to be the whole. So we're going to write it as a part to whole relationship. So part over whole is going to say that 162 is the part out of the 200, which is the whole. So since 162 is a part, the 200 is the whole that goes to the bottom. And it's supposed to become a percentage, which is also a part to whole relationship. But as a percentage, the whole is always 100. So I'm going to automatically put 100 at the bottom for the whole, which means that I'm looking for this missing number here. So to solve this problem, I look at the 200 and I say, what do I do to 200 to make it 100? And that answer is divide by 2. And this is really just solving equivalent fractions or solving proportions, which is a skill that should already be known by now. So if I divide 200 by 2, I divide 162 by 2. And that answer is going to be 81. And if I have to use long division to figure that out, that's fine. So uh, 162 divided by 2 is 81. So my final answer is 81 out of 100 is 81%. So once you solve the equivalent fraction, whatever is above the 100 is your percentage. So the answer is 81%. Let's do another one. 21 is 75% of what number? So 21 is 75% of what number? So again, they're asking me what is, if I take 21, it is 75%. So if I start with 21, it's a part because it's 75 percent it's not all of it of what number i don't know but that's going to be a whole so now i know that 21 is the part the whole is um the whole is unknown and my 75 percent is already a part over a whole so here's what i mean 75 percent is 75 out of 100 that's already a part over a whole so i'm going to write that relationship because i already know it then the 21 is also a part, so it must be up top over the whole, which I don't know. So I'm going to leave that as a blank. Some people like to put a box. So now what I have to do is solve this problem to say 75 over 100 equals 21 over blank. Well, 
usually I would say, what do I do to 21 to make, to, I'm sorry, to 75 to make it 21 and then do the same thing to 100. But I don't know what that number is off the top of my head. So what I have to do is I have to take the 75 over 100 and I have to simplify it first. And these numbers can both be divided by 25. So if I divide both of them by 25, it'll become 3 over 4. And now, if I say 3 over 4 is equal to 21 over blank, well, now I can see that if I multiply by 7, that will turn 3 into 21. So I multiply 4 by 7, and that'll give me 28. So what that means is my whole was 28 all along. Because 75 over 100 is equivalent to 3 fourths. And because these are all equivalent fractions anyway, I could replace 75 over 100 with 3 over 4. And then I can solve the problem in the same way. So my answer is 28. So what is 2% of 50? Again, we've done a problem like this before. So 2% of 50, so that'll be 2%, essentially 2% times 50. So we move this two times. That means it's 0 0.02. So 0 0.02 times 50. So in other words, I'm really just multiplying 50 by 2 at the end of the day. So 50 times 2 is 100. And so since I had two decimals or two digits behind the decimal here and none here, I need to put two digits back. So if I move this twice, one, two, my final answer will be 1.00 or 1%. I'm sorry, not 1%, but 1. So 1 is 2% of 50. Hundred and ninety two is what percent of six hundred? So again, same idea. Hundred and ninety two is what percent? So if hundred and ninety two is a certain percent of six hundred, then this will be the part. And the of six hundred would be the whole. So I'm gonna write it as a part over a whole, which is in this case, hundred and ninety two is the part over the 600, which will be equal to a percentage that I don't know, but I do know that the whole percentage would be 100 because 100% is the whole thing. So I look, I can say from 600 to 100, that means I divide by six. So to solve this, I just have to divide by six. 192 divided by six will be that missing percentage. So six goes into 192, Three times to be 18, a difference of one. Bring down the two to get 12. Six goes into 12. Two times, two times, six exactly 12. And so my final answer is 32. So this means that 192 is 32% of 600. What is 40% of 10? So when we say 40% of 10, that again goes back to the straightforward questions. So 40% of 10 will be 40% of 10. And you know, we can write of as times 10. And so that would be, move it two times to the left, one, two, that's 0 0.40 or really just 0.4 because that makes no the, the trailing zeros behind the decimal make no difference. So this really just requires me to multiply 10 by 0.4. And we know that that just means multiply 10 by 4. And so that's 40. And so since there was one digit at the, the one decimal behind, the one digit behind the decimal here, and there were none here altogether, there should be one digit behind the decimal in my answer. So if I put it back, one, di one digit, that would be 4.0. My final answer is 4.0, which I can just write as 4. So 3 is what percent of 5? Again, so since 3 is what percent, 
I don't know what percent it is of five. I know three is a certain percentage that makes it a part of five makes that the five would be the whole number. So I'm going to write a part of a whole relationship. I know three is the part and five is the whole. I don't know the percentage, but I do know that the whole in the percentage is going to be 100. And some people even like to label the percentage column so that you don't forget that this number is for the percentage. So now I can look. Five goes into 100 20 times. So I multiply 5 by 20 to get 100. So I do the same thing to the 3. And 3 times 20 gives me 60. So altogether, this must mean that 3 is 60% of 100. 3 is 60% of 100. And that makes sense because 3 is more than 50% of 5. I'm sorry. I said, so 3 is 60% of 5, not 100. 3 is 60% of 5 because 3 is more than 50% of 5. So 60% seems reasonable. So that's it. The answer would be 60%. So that's how you do it. If they say a number is what percent of another number, then you're just going to set up a part to whole relationship. If they say what is a certain percent of another number, then you're just going to convert that percentage to a decimal and multiply. Uh, if you practice it a few times, you'll start to memorize the patterns and the, and the phrases. And